How do you reconcile this letter that you read from, from the statement that the senator from Connecticut? Senator, here's how I rec reconcile it. Three words. She got caught. She got caught. And we found the letter. And she didn't turn it over. And during committee, instead of saying, yeah, I signed the letter, and I shouldn't have done it, I don't believe that. First, she said she wasn't sure. And then she was sure. And then she didn't mean it. And then she'll make a pinky promise that she'll be a, a fair federal judge. These positions are for life. They're there forever. At a minimum, just, just because you've seen my cousin Vinny doesn't qualify you to be on the federal bench. At a minimum, there ought to be a minimum level of integrity and a minimum level of, of adherence to the rule of law. And this lady sets a new standard. And I wish you didn't have to say that, but those are the facts. How can a litigant, a citizen accused of a crime, somebody who goes to court to seek vindication for a wrong done to them, how can they have any confidence whatsoever in a judge that won't tell the truth? They can't. And shame on us for allowing someone like that to get on the federal bench. The independence of the judiciary in the United States is a single most distinguishing feature of our form of government because ultimately people are going to be held accountable and not for political reasons, not because of their unpopular point of view, but because a judge in some court, perhaps with an appeal to an intermediate court and maybe a, the Supreme Court, has said, you were wrong and uh, the other side was right. But we also said that the, these judges should be independent of politics. That's why they get lifetime appointments. That's why the Constitution says their salary cannot be diminished while they serve in office. So what recourse does a litigant, a citizen accused of a crime, or the prosecutor who's representing the state or perhaps the United States, what recourse do they have against somebody who's confirmed as a federal judge who won't tell the truth? It's a, it's a mystery to me, and we're creating a real problem here, in my, my opinion, Senator, and, and a real problem for the efficient operation of her court. I, I mean, if, if I'm a criminal defendant uh, or a criminal defense attorney, I'm going to do everything I can to try to get this lady as my judge. And if I'm a prosecutor, I'm going to try to avoid her, and I think this letter may very well be grounds for appeal in every single solitary case. I mean, she says it here, biggest Dallas. I don't believe in putting people in jail I, if they're part of this particular group that she deems virtuous. Now, if you're not in her, her, her group of people that she deems underprivileged and virtuous, you're really at risk, apparently. If you can somehow become black, brown, indigenous, an immigrant, people with mental illness people with disabilities, people in the LGBTQ plus community, people who use drugs, if you can convince the judge that you have been engaged in sex work and street economies, or you are homeless or poor, then she thinks you should not be in jail. I've heard it said that the single most powerful public official in the United States is a individual federal judge. Have you heard that? Yes, sir. I I think that's and what recourse does a does Congress have to a federal judge who blatantly disregards their obligations under the law? We can't. Do we have the authority to uh, force them to recuse or disqualify them? Isn't it fact that, given the constitutional independence of the judiciary, the sole recourse that Congress has? I'm not talking about the litigants that Congress would have would be to impeach, for the House to impeach and the Senate to convict them in a court of impeachment. Isn't that right? That is correct. And that's why I've always been so proud to sit on this committee, because our job is to stop people from getting on the bench who are whack jobs.